I want to ask you guys a question about this Japanese Zero. Do you know, you know during World War II, how many planes, on average, would the Japanese Zero shoot down before it was destroyed? I'll take a guess at four. They were much superior than the American planes. Begin guess five. I'd say probably uh, three. But you're both too low. Take a wild guess of 12. Why do you say 12? But I, I know they shot down a lot of American planes. They did shoot down a lot of American planes. As a matter of fact, the kill ratio was about 12 to 1. Holy cow. 12 to 1. You wow. got it. What's your name, man? Jeff. Jeff Turns out Jeff built a lot of model World War II planes as a kid growing up in Providence, Rhode Island. So I send him to meet curator Tom Crouch. Welcome. Who has an unusual World War II object in storage. This is the Paul Garber Preservation Storage and Restoration Facility. And it's where we store a lot of the objects that the public sees in the museum. Jeff, can you give me a hand with this? Now. Can you guess what this is? Is this a Zero? Right, uh, the Mitsubishi A6M Zero. Named for the last digit in the imperial year that it was built, 2600, the Japanese Zero is the deadliest fighter plane to come off an assembly line. In an April 1942 battle with well-trained English pilots over Sri Lanka, 36 Zeros took on 60 British aircraft and shot down 27 of them with the loss of just a single zero. So how was this kite used? Well, the Navy had a terrible problem training their any aircraft gunners to shoot at these maneuverable airplanes dancing around the sky. Then an extraordinary man came up with the notion of doing a kite that would be maneuverable so that somebody could dance it around the sky while the gunners practiced shooting at it. That extraordinary man was Paul E. Garber, a lifelong model builder and kite maker who served as a Navy commander in World War II. Paul believed he could build a kite to help defeat the deadly Japanese Zero. He just had to prove it. How did he convince the Navy into this program? Paul got them to the roof of the Navy building on the mall, and he took one of these early kites and wrote the Admiral's first name in the sky. The kite was that maneuverable, and that was enough to win the Navy's approval to begin the target kite project. Paul patented his design and launched a Navy training program that took kite flying to new heights. So how does this work? So the person on the ground is doing is controlling this bar and that controls this, the rudder down here. And the rudder is what makes it possible to maneuver the kite. So what was the result of this program? Did the gunner accuracy improve? It did improve. And Mr. Garber loved to tell the story about the time in the Pacific when a ship's crew was doing any aircraft practice on a kite at the very moment when the Japanese appeared to attack the ship. All the officer in charge had to do was say, ship aim from the kites to the planes, and uh, they were all set to go right into action. Shooting down the Japanese Zero and saving the ship. 